Hi guys, it's Julia from Lawn Care Business Success. And uh, in today's video, I wanted to talk about and show you guys a quick overview on how you can purchase your own vinyl sign plotter and make your own uh, signs and graphics for your vehicles and trailers for your uh, lawn care business. Now, a few years ago, this would probably be uh, sort of out of the question for most lawn care businesses as the machines uh, were pretty expensive back then. Uh, but in today's market, you can find a basic sign plotting machine on places like Amazon for less than $300. And uh, as most of you uh, would know, if you've gone out and priced signs, uh, that's probably roughly around the cost uh, of doing vinyl signs on maybe one vehicle for some basic lettering. Uh, so for the price of uh, doing your signs on one vehicle, by purchasing a machine and a little bit of know-how, you can uh, do the vinyl signs yourself. Uh, do them on multiple vehicles, make your own lawn signs, uh, and a bunch of other uh, useful uh, uses that uh, a vinyl sign plotter uh, can uh, enable you to do. Uh, so in this video, I'm just going to do an overview. It's uh, going to be a bit long, uh, just so we can cover all the aspects of uh, uh, the techniques and stuff to get uh, bubble-free uh, vinyl sign applications on your vehicles. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so in this... Uh... Uh, example or tutorial video today um, to use a sign machine uh, you're gonna need some sort of software now most sign software you'll find is made for Windows um, there are some other uh, ways if you're using a Mac um, like you can use uh, Corel draw uh, to do your signs in uh, as it does vector images and then just use a driver uh, that will uh, hook up your sign cutting uh, vinyl plotter to your Mac. Uh, now I'm using a Mac uh, to do uh, my signs in now. Uh, originally I use, uh, was using a Windows machine uh, when I first got the sign machine. Uh, but now I'm using a Mac uh, and I'm just running um, Windows. Uh, as you can see an old version of uh, Windows XP. Uh, in using VirtualBox. So I set up VirtualBox on my Mac uh, using, and then I installed uh, Windows XP on there. And I'm using software that came with my sign machine called WinPC Sign. There's a whole bunch of different ones depending on the sign machine you get, but they're all basically the same. Uh, when you start a new sign, uh, you're going to get a blank canvas here. Uh, it'll let you ask, or it'll ask you uh, the dimensions of the sign that you want to make. Uh, basically, uh, the sign or the size of the vinyl that you're using. So as you can see here, there's some measurements on the side here. This uh, side here in this particular program uh, is the uh, front of your sign machine. Uh, so this square is representing a 24 inch by 24 inch square piece of vinyl. And like I said, this would be the front. So if this was uh, looking at your sign machine from an overhead view, your sign machine would be sitting basically where I'm outlining with the, the mouse arrow here. This would be the front of the machine. This would be the back of the machine. And your vinyl would be fed through the back and it would come out the front on this side. So when you're planning out your signs and how you want to lay out uh, your signs, you just got to keep that in mind. So if I'm using or making a big logo that takes up a whole bunch of space, then it doesn't really matter. But if I'm making, say, just a single line of text, instead of putting that single line of text down, you know, here um, and wasting all this vinyl, I'll, you know, first type out that single line of text, but then I'll flip it so that it's actually along here so that when the sign machine's cutting, it's only using, say, a three inch piece a vinyl by that 24 inch length instead of wasting uh you know a 24 inch uh length of that roll uh with you know nothing being made over here uh, so i'm gonna just for uh, this example i'm gonna close that and i'm gonna open up a previous file i have of some of my company logos so this will give you an idea of uh, what the sign uh, machine sort of looks like. So when you're thinking about sign machine, uh, you, as you can see here, uh, we've got that same 24 inch uh, width here, and this would be the front of the sign machine. But now 
uh, I inputted a larger size for the length of the roll so that I could fit a larger. So as you can see here, it's a uh, almost four foot long uh, sign uh, there. So that's the graphic that goes on the front of my trailer. Is that there? Now the color doesn't really uh, do much. It just makes it uh, easier to see. There's no color printing or anything um, in these uh, for these vinyl sign plotters as that uh, roll of vinyl is going to be all one color. What you have to remember with uh, sign plotters is that unlike a regular graphics program or picture program, all the machine cares about is the outlines of the letters. So the uh, you know actual outlines of the letters. So it has to have um, you know an inside and an outside uh, basically, uh, and that, that's all it's doing. All the machine is is basically a tiny exacto knife that in that sheet of vinyl is just outlining the letters that you have here. So it's just going around that outline and what you're going to essentially do after is basically you're going to manually pull out the vinyl around these letters that you're not going to use so that you're left with just the letters. So you have to think of every graphic that you do, uh, like my little logo here of a shovel leaf. Uh, it all has to have an outline, whether it's the inside or the outside. Now, the thing with vector graphics um, is that they let you um, easily expand and uh, contract them when you're doing different signs. So if I select an object, um, oh, I missed the bottom part of the shovel there, but if I grab an object here, so it's grabbed uh, this whole shovel logo. Once your sign or your graphic in a sign program is vectorized uh, like this, then you can simply grab and you'll see the size right now, the size parameters of this sign or this particular element that I have selected is uh, 15 inches high by 8.966 inches wide. But because it's a vector image, I can just grab a corner and make it as big as I want. So now it's 23 inches by 13 inches. Um, and likewise, I can shrink it down if I want to make it a tiny little element. And it's still going to cut it out all perfectly. Uh, and all proportionately um, to whatever size you want. So that's how the vectorized art, and that's why you can use a program like Corel Draw, which also creates vectorized images. And instead of printing it to a regular printer uh, with paper, you can print it out uh, to a vinyl sign plotter using a, a driver if you want to use a drawing program like that, uh, which seems to be pretty popular in some uh, sign shops. Uh, but like I said, there are lots of different uh, sign specific software uh, that you can use uh, and uh, a lot of the sign machines that you buy will already come with software just like uh, the one that I bought uh, did so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close this window because I don't want to save any of those changes that I did but what I want to do is I'm gonna open it actually back up because what I want is the one uh, logo here this free estimates so I'm just gonna draw a box over the whole thing to select that whole element and I'm just gonna go file or sorry edit copy like I would a normal object I can then close that window I'm gonna open up a new window it automatically opens a 24 by 24 inch sheet and then I can just paste my element that I want from that uh, other uh, um, sheet that I copied. So like I was explaining here, if I put this down here and this being the front, it's going to cut out all the letters that way, but it's going to waste all this vinyl. So you want to try and flip it around in uh, this direction so that it uh, wastes a minimal amount. Now in this program, edit multiple, you can just go there, click an angle, flip it 90 degrees click OK and there's my new one that I want to use I'm gonna delete the old Old one there. I'm going to just go and select a new one. And I'm going to place it 
back on the vinyl where I want it. So as you can see there, I just flipped it and that'll save a lot of vinyl because now the machine's gonna cut it along the front edge and then I can just cut off this strip of uh, vinyl off of it without wasting any more of the roll. So once you're done, you're just gonna go to this uh, cutting tool here and you'll notice that then it gets rid of the color and it shows you just the outline and that's exactly what the machine's gonna do. And you've got this all set up. Uh, you can click uh, different options here, uh, the weeding, weed all. So weeding, it just makes another little line around the whole outline there to make it easier when you're peeling off that vinyl that you're not going to use. And uh, for the next part here, we're going to go to the uh, actual plotter. <laughs> Okay, so here's the uh, piece of vinyl that I just cut uh, with that free estimates in it. Uh, this white here is a list of services um, for the side door and the big green sign underneath is the big company logo that's gonna go on the front of my trailer. And I'm just uh, with this here. So here's a, a picture of how my trailer looked um, previously before it was stolen so when the trailer was stolen they uh, basically used some pry bars to pry open this side here and uh, ultimately they uh, totally destroyed the door uh, and this edge here so this whole front section had to be repainted uh, and this whole side door had to be rebuilt uh, so uh, the door was rebuilt it was all painted it all looks great now uh, just need to do the sign so this big large green portion here is the big uh, sign for the front the white is the list of services here. That free estimates that I had just cut and showed you guys on the computer is this logo across the top here. Uh, and you'll notice uh, that here on the white, I don't know if you can see in the video, uh, but the, there's some crinkles here uh, in the vinyl, uh, just from uh, how the vinyl was stored. I guess something uh, uh, squished up against uh, the roll and uh, put some um, crinkles in it, but for the majority of it, uh, it's still really good where the lines are. And I know you guys can't see the, the outlines that were cut by the machine, but they're really good. There's a couple spots where it's on the crinkles, um, but once it's on the vehicle, I'll see how it looks. And if need be, I can then take another piece of vinyl and just cut out one or two lines of new text and replace just those one or two lines instead of wasting a whole sheet of vinyl. So anyways, the next step that you're gonna have to do with any of this um, and I'll just check my placement here of the camera so you guys can see uh, good. Yeah, it still looks good. So is uh, what's called weeding. So weeding is basically uh, once the vinyl's out, the machine just uses its little X-Acto knife. It cut out the outlines. It's really hard to see at the moment. You got to have some good lighting. But you basically take an X-Acto knife and you're going to go in and pick out the vinyl that you're not going to use. So basically here... You guys probably can't tell, but there's a letter R here. So in the center here, I'm just going to pull out the inside of that R. And I'm going to go through the rest of the letters and see if there's anything else on the insides. Uh, so there's a letter A here that has the inside that needs to be pulled out. 
So now that we're done with that part, the next step here, I'm just gonna flip this over because uh, I like uh, going from this end here. I'm gonna pick out the corner. So that weeding option, the machine basically drew an outline, a rectangular outline around that whole word to make it easier to weed. So um, you can do that. You can also just use a ruler or freehand if you've got a whole bunch of lines of text like this one here. I don't have the weeding option uh, enabled. So I'm just gonna go in after and just use my X-Acto knife and cut some lines in between. But basically, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go in. I'm gonna start in the corner and pull the corner up. And you'll start to see as I pull that the lettering will start to show up. Now this can be um, a little frustrating sometimes. You have to re really be careful with your knife and uh, the extra vinyl here. You don't want to uh, have it touch back down on other letters because it'll pull up the vinyl off the wax base. So you wanna just go slowly and keep managing your uh, vinyl as you go. It's a little bit um, tedious at first. The more you do it, the more you get the hang of it. Um, it's probably been a few years since I've done um, a sign. So this is uh, gonna be a little bit slower than uh, my normal, uh, how I would have done it. And sometimes you just use your finger and press down on the centers or pieces of letters that you want to stay to make sure that they don't get pulled up. Like you see, I had my fingers there on the parts of the E to keep them down as I pulled up the, the extra vinyl. Always managing that roll of vinyl to make sure, or the extra garbage vinyl to make sure it's not going to touch back down. And we got who here. That's the second letter. Now we got the start of the new E there. Some of the things to look out for are um, the uh, dotted I's uh, for certain words. You want to make sure uh, lots of times the, the dot will come off. So you want to make sure you're careful with those. As you can see here, the, I don't know if the camera caught that, but the bottom of the S pulled up. So I just stuck my finger through to poke it down back onto the wax paper because that's obviously a part of the letter I want to keep. So we got the, as you see, part of the, the letter T is coming up here. So I'm just going to use my free pinky here to push down on it. And then I'll use my other pinky to pull it just to make sure that it stays. So what do we have here next? We have a a letter I. I'm going to manage this bundle. Now, the sharper your knives are, as well, the uh, as far as the blade on the machine goes, the um, easier this will be as well. Uh, as the blades start to get older and used, you'll have to replace them. That being said, um, I haven't uh, replaced the one on my machine for quite a while, but it seems to still be cutting pretty good here. As you can see, it's, uh, it's cut cleanly through most of it without too much difficulty. I'm just gonna manage my bundle again. I put this knife down as we get towards the end here. So we got part of an E and an S on the next letter. So the bundle kind of broke, which is fine. Off of that, as we're at the end. And there you go, so there's the Free estimates word and now um, to finish it off I'm going to pull off the surrounding vinyl as I don't need any of this obviously for my sign 
Again, being careful not to let this extra vinyl here touch. The rest of the sign. So what you're left with uh, is basically this, the vinyl, well, depending on whatever color, doesn't matter what color you're using, it comes in rolls, it's solid color. Um, you can get some special effect vinyls like uh, sparkles and gold leaf and that sort of stuff to simulate that sort of thing. But it all comes on wax paper like this. So essentially it's just wax paper with a sticky vinyl on top. The vinyl, uh, you know, sticks to the uh, wax paper just enough to let you uh, pull off um, what you don't need. So the next step here is to apply um, a application tape. Um, so basically this is like a low sticky or low, um, yeah, low adhesive masking tape. Comes in different roll widths. You'll see uh, possibly later in another video I'll show <clears throat> or later in the video I'll show uh, the larger rolls for the larger logos. But essentially what we're gonna do here is you're gonna stick this masking tape on top of the vinyl decals. And what this, this is gonna do is this tape is just strong enough to pull off the letters in their proper spacing, the way you have it laid out here, off of the uh, wax paper. But it's not strong enough to hold the letters once the adhesive of the sign is stuck to its permanent um, spot so basically all this is used for is to lift off the sign when you're ready to stick it onto uh, basically what you're uh, gonna stick it onto whether it's the trailer side or your vehicle window or what have you so the easiest way to uh, do this I find sort of a little trick is I roll it backwards so I've got my sticky end here and I do this for whatever size I'm using whether it's a big piece or a little piece is I'll stick it here the adhesive is obviously sticking up but it makes it easier for me to roll it basically on top I can sort of see how much of this I need All right so I've got uh, that like that and then what I'll do is I'll just use my exacto knife poke a hole and just slice it now I take my transfer tape flip it around and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to uh, so you don't get you want to try and get no air bubbles stuck in this so what I do is I usually start from the middle um, or if you can start from one end you can do that too but basically you're going to start from one end and roll it on I will sometimes do it uh, from the middle as well same concept where I just let it touch down on the middle and then I slowly roll it out that way it's pushing out any of the air as it's rolling out now as you you can see now I can just lay it out sideways push it out sideways and there you go there's no air bubbles in it then you would go from the middle you're gonna use your uh, little sign squeegee you're going to get some creases and stuff on the actual tape, which isn't a big deal. But it just makes it easier if there's no uh, air bubbles or anything left in the sign. Once you get it uh, pressed on there good, then you can go in there with a little bit more force. And press it down. This is to get the um, adhesive on the tape to stick to those letters. If you don't uh, press it down properly, what you'll find sometimes is when you go to uh, pull off the tape to pull the sign off, some of the letters will be stuck behind because they, they didn't adhere properly to the tape. You can hear that little uh, sort of bumping as it's bumping up against the edges of the vinyl, the squeegee, which means you're putting some good pressure on it. And that's it. 
Okay, so as you can see, I've got all the vinyl cut and weeded. Uh, so it's all ready for transfer tape now. You can see how I put the website address on the side of the uh, services there to save on vinyl. And that'll fit underneath the green just like that on the trailer with the back uh, paint showing through. Uh, so like I said, the next step is to do the transfer tape. So I'm going to do these one at a time. So I'll just put this one aside for now. And we'll start with this one here. So like I mentioned earlier, you can get the transfer tape in basically a whole bunch of uh, different sizes. Um, different widths for depending on what you want. And like I say, it's basically just a low tack uh, masking tape. So for this one here, I'm gonna go with the large roll. And again, I'm gonna do the same trick that I did on the last uh, smaller sign. So I'm just gonna pull it up. I'm just going to lay it backwards like that so I can unroll it to get the general length of tape that I need. So I'll just use an X-Acto knife here. Slice it, and then again, the same basic way that I uh, applied the other. I just sort of shake it out, make sure there's no wrinkles in it, make sure it doesn't stick to itself. I'll line up the uh, tape, overlap it a little bit with the edge of the letters coming down the side here, but I'll just overlap it a little bit and let the center touch down first and then I can slowly work the sides roll out for all the services use my speed G start gently from the center out As you can see, that didn't quite cover the whole decal, so I'll just flip it over. I'm going to do the same on this side. So I usually check it to see if it covers. You can see that that will easily cover the whole width there. And this one I'm going to go all the way to the end so I can get the website address covered. Okay, just flipped up. Knife to slice. Grab my end, flip it over, and try to get it nice and even, just like that. Now, this one I'm just going to line up with the edge of the vinyl. center down and then out. You can have it overlap in the middle, that's fine with the tape. And 
again with the squeegee from the center. Now, that we got it on there, we can really press down. Got no wrinkles. Just to make sure the tape adheres properly to the letters. And so that it'll pull the letters off the wax paper. Just holding the squeegee at like a 45 degree angle so I can get maximum pressure on there. And that one's ready to go. So basically now I'll just take some scissors and I'll cut this section of sign off so that I can uh, place that where I need it. And we'll move on to the next one. And that's it, that one's done. Actually, the next step uh, that you wanna do before going out and applying them is now, you wanna take a good pair of scissors and you wanna cut out uh, the decals and cut out the parts that you're not going to be using or if you've got two separate decals you want to be cutting those out so what I like to do is I just cut around and I like to leave a say quarter inch to half inch border at the max but you want to try to keep it as even as possible throughout each of the sides that you're doing so as you can see along the top here I'm trying to keep the border fairly consistent. Now when I go to the side here, I'm just going to follow the tape line. Just cutting the excess off. This one is a separate sign, so I'll move this one from. And then even these ones here, I'll trim. Closer to what I need. That one looks good. So you want to have something that sort of like, looks like that if you're doing individual uh, parts to your sign for the large pieces. Like I said, you wanna leave just a little bit of a border around it. And that looks good for that one there around it essentially on this edge and that's pretty much it that one there is ready to go And 
that's it. Those are definitely now uh, ready to be uh, taken out to the trailer and uh, stuck on there. All right, so let's head out. So we know we need 17 inches from the side, five and a half from the top. So I'm just gonna start by just taking some tape and measuring from the top of the trailer there. to the bottom of the tape line, five and a half inches. Five and a half inches. And then 17 inches from this side. I'm just gonna do one more, just to get sort of an idea. Of where we need to place this. So that gives us an idea of where we need to place this particular large logo. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take it, I'm just going to put some, a couple of pieces of tape right on the top of it. About halfway. Now by just roughly sort of guessing, where those lines are, just to get the rough idea of where we've put that. 17 inches there, 17 inches there. You can check some of these as well to make sure they are five and a half from the top. Make sure this one hasn't moved. Still five and a half there. So then you're just gonna run a piece of tape across the entire top, half covering the top of the sign and half on the actual trailer itself. This is gonna act like a hinge when you're applying the decals so that you don't get any air bubbles. I'll just press that firmly to make sure it's got a good hold on the decal. Just like that, we're ready to uh, stick this one down. So what we're gonna do rather than if you were to try to peel off the backing of this decal and stick it all down at once, you're more likely to uh, get into a situation where you're gonna get those air bubbles and stuff trapped underneath uh, your uh, signs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the hinge method. And now that this is stuck at the top, I'm just gonna cut in between all these letters in groups of two and I'm going to cut all the way up past the uh, paper at the back there up to the tape so that I can basically flip it up. And like I said, I can do this in groups of uh, two for this particular one. Cut around some of the letters. Like that. This one here, uh, I can probably do this one in three. Cut 
cutting it all the way up past the paper. And this one here, I'll do the two. Letters like that. Now, what you need to do is basically, because they're all still lined up exactly how you need them, you can now peel off that backing and roll that uh, decal on. So how we do that is we just pull it up, like I say. Find the edge there, just like that. You see your decals being exposed or being released. They say that um, transfer tape is just strong enough to hold the decals, but it doesn't really hold on to the uh, wax paper backing. So now what I'll start to do is I'll use my hand to start basically pushing this down in sort of a rolling motion. That way, any air bubbles that might be uh, potentially trapped in there are squeezed out. Do the same for the next side. It's a bit windy here today, so I gotta be careful with that. It's also wet. So again, just giving it a sort of rolled on motion. So as that decal starts to um, make contact with the trailer or whatever you're sticking it to, that rolling motion is pushing out any air <clears throat> before it gets trapped. Large shovel logo. Start just to slowly roll that on. So that we get no wrinkles, no air bubbles. So the next step now is to use your squeegee and start to really press those down. Applying good pressure to them. So, once that's all done, we're ready to start uh, peeling off the tape. So, start with the masking tape at the top. And start to slowly pick a corner. And just start to pull it down on an angle. Applying even pressure so that you don't accidentally pull off any of the decal. Now, depending on your logo, uh, you may find like uh, with my logo here that, uh, you know, the first time I put this on, um, I centered the uh, sign from the edge of the letters there to the end of this shovel logo here. And uh, it came out uh, off centered looking, even though mm -hmm. it was perfectly centered. Um, so you might find depending on the elements of your sign that you may need to play around with the placement um, 
and uh, uh, and put it actually off center, like I mentioned before, to give it the uh, illusion that it is actually centered. And I know that roughly I want it to be that 17 inches. I'm going to just lightly. And I have my two and a quarter and one. Two and a quarter and one. A quarter and one. So that is perfect and ready to go essentially. So again, I'm going to do the hinge. this piece of tape that I'm using as a registration mark off. I'm going to do this with the hinge method uh, and I'll do it in, let's say, groups of three letters. So I just cut up past the paper backing into the tape hinge that I've created. You want to make sure that you go past that paper backing all the way. And this last section here, I'll do it. Groups of two. So again, just flip it up. The paper and start to roll it on. You'll notice that with smaller letters here, uh, you can go a little bit quicker as they roll on a lot quicker. There's not such a big surface area for air to get trapped in as long as you're using that rolling technique. Now it took me a lot of um, trial and error when I first started doing signs um, and basically self teaching myself how to do or how to apply them properly. Um, you'll notice on the market there's a wet methods where you spray down your area with certain solutions that they sell and they basically let you peel off the whole backing um, off of your sign and put it on and move it around and stuff and when the solution dries then the, the sign is technically supposed to be adhered properly. Um, I don't really like that. I tried different samples of the solution and stuff and I just prefer putting on the signs dry right to start and you know you've got a good bond and they're not coming off and uh, then I found out about this uh, basically this hinge method and uh, it was been the best way of doing it for me no bubbles no messing around no uh, expensive spray uh, application sprays to purchase works uh, with any sort of uh, method or any sort of backing
ready to go. There we go. And that is how you apply the bigger logos. Next, I'll show you uh, how to do a um, sign if you've got a list of, say, services uh, and you're going more down in a vertical way. Essentially, it's exactly the same, except instead of having the hinge at the top, you're going to have the hinge on the side and you're going to cut out the lines of services and roll them on lengthwise. Okay, so when you have a sign that consists of a list of services going down and it's all a bunch of small lettering, what I would suggest is to do the hinge on the side rather than doing it from the top and trying to uh, negotiate your scissors all the way up through a bunch of letters. That way you can just do one row at a time. Um, I would, uh, you might, you can't see it from this shot here, but I'll show it a little bit later. I've also got a couple of pieces of tape just at the top of the sign just to hold the weight so that once we start cutting, um, you know, all that weight isn't just on this little uh, piece of uh, tape here. And what I'll do is I'll start from the bottom. I'll start cutting from the bottom and adding it so it progressively gets lighter and lighter to prevent any possible uh, sag of the sign falling uh, forward once uh, you know we have this all done we've taken all that time to do all our measurements so I'm just gonna start at the bottom uh, unfortunately it's raining so the camera's pretty close um, so you might not see the first couple here Let's see if I can uh, possibly edit it out later so what to do is just Start with this one here, peel it off, and just roll it sideways. Now the next one. sure you're cutting all the way past into the past the transfer paper on the back so that the hinge effect will work and that transfer paper can be removed again just sort of rolling it on in that sort of effect I can hear the rain coming down quite a bit now. I'm sort of cramped here doing this in the garage. Not the greatest uh, for recording the video, but uh, I needed to get it done today.
And then finally, one on the top. If you do get any air bubbles, you can try to just squeeze them out, uh, moving them slowly to the sides of the letter, just working them. Uh, you can also take a very fine needle and just poke a little dot to release the air and then use your squeegee to squeeze out any air if you do get uh, some small air bubbles. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.